This video today is going to show you how to make a very uh, simple but effective uh, crawfish pattern. Um, <clears throat> it's going to look something like this one here. Uh, actually, this color is a uh, it's a pumpkin uh, back with a chartreuse belly. And this was developed by uh, pro bass angler Craig Alderman, and uh, it has proven very effective, especially on the tournament trail, from what he tells me. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, I have a 2.5 square bill crankbait. It has the weight transfer system, and I got uh, I get these lure bodies from uh, DingerBaits.com. Uh, he has a big selection of uh, lure bodies, and uh, they're at great prices too. So that's where I get a lot of my my lure blanks. <clears throat> so what I did first is I started with a white base coat, and a lot of a lot of the lures are started with a white base coat. Um, you know, your, your paint's only as good as your base, so I use a white base coat to get started. Now we're going to go with a uh, with the belly, and I'm going to use a fluorescent yellow, and this one I use a Createx uh, color. <clears throat> so, we're going to get started here. Get some paint in the brush. I'm using Iwata HPCS airbrush, and uh, Let's see, I'm going to use about 15 PSI, and we'll start painting uh, the belly. It's probably going to take a couple coats here. I'll only go halfway up the belly. You'll be very surprised how very simple this lure pattern is. Alright, you don't want to put too much on at first, so I got one one layer on and now I'll I'll heat set that. It dries fairly quick. And we'll do another coat. With these light colors you may have to do two, three, maybe four coats, so you're gonna have to just decide as you paint what you need. All the way across the gills. Okay, so I'll dry that with the uh, with, with the hair dryer. And I'll probably do another coat. Uh, you probably don't need to see that, but um, the next. Okay, now we're going to apply the uh, the pumpkin color on the top of the, the bait. I use a uh, detailed burnt orange by Wicked Colors. Um, but I mean, there's other options out there too, such as, uh, you know, Comart has a transparent burnt orange that works just as good, but you may have to use a little bit of either a transparent black or a, a sepia to, uh, on top of that to darken it up and give a little bit of depth. <clears throat> but I just started using the, uh, the Wicked. Um, burnt orange and I seem to like that a little better. This way I don't have to darken it up with, uh, with another color. Okay, so we'll just uh, do a little bit of burnt orange here. Let me take a couple, a couple coats here. Set that, and uh, then we'll go to the next step. Okay, what we're going to do now is the uh, is paint the craw pattern, <clears throat> and a little background on, on how I did that. And I'll probably produce a video on how to make those stencils. But <clears throat> I do use stencils, and here's just one part of a stencil right here. And you're probably wondering how do we get to that point? What I did is I built a vacuum forming box which uh, I found some instructional videos on YouTube because you can find everything on YouTube and then I bought some 20 mil uh, PETG plastic and then I took um, one of my 
2.5s I sacrificed and cut in half with a Dremel. And <clears throat> then I placed the lure half, as you can see here, on the box, turn the vacuum on, heat up the plastic with a, with a heat gun, lay the plastic on top of the lure, lure body, and the vacuum will suck that, uh, that plastic around the lure and you will end up with something like this. And for this crop pattern, uh, I need two of these per side, so uh, I had to make four of these stencils. And you can make two at a time. I mean, my vacuum forming box is about a 12 by 12, and these sheets you can buy is a 12 by 12. And these 20 mil PEG, PETG sheets, uh, you can actually buy on eBay, uh, and they're not expensive at all. <clears throat> so once you uh, you made your stencil, then I drew my craw pattern on the on my lure body half here, and then I would lay this on top of my my lure blank. Of course, it's the wrong wrong direction, but and trace the pattern onto the stencil. Again, you'll have to do two of these. So the way I did that was I cut out big section, scallop section first, and then this middle section next. Then on the on another stencil, I cut out the middle section and the smaller end section here. And uh, you can cut that with a, with a Dremel tool with a real fine bit, or you can use an X-Acto knife. Um, once I found the, the right bit, the uh, Dremel cuts pretty quick. Um, and you got to make sure you, you sand your stencil afterwards too, so it doesn't scratch the, the bait. <clears throat> but I will produce a video on, on how we do the vacuum forming for the stencils. Or you can buy stencils online too. There's some people out there that, that sell them. Uh, I don't sell them because I, I can't spend a lot of time making stencils. and I just mostly just use them for my own personal use. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is I, I got some black paint in the airbrush that's thinned out and <clears throat> I'm gonna take the, the lure body here and I'm gonna start with the large section first and what's great about these stencils look they just fit r perfectly right on the lure and <clears throat> I'm gonna spray not directly in the scallop pattern but mostly on the stencil and you want some of that over spray to get on the lure and that's what will produce uh, the outline. So I have my pressure down to about 12 to 15 psi <clears throat> and then we'll start spraying. So I'll start with the big scallop pattern first. There we're so lightly mostly on the stencil. Okay there's the big pattern. Now the smaller scallop, and to give it some depth, and you'll see what I mean later, I'm going to spray only on this side and make a little bit a little darker on the edge, and that's kind of like a sh you know a shadow to show that the scallop shell is curved. All right, so let's take this off, and you get something like that. Okay, and we'll heat set that momentarily. Now I take out that next section, place it right on top, okay, and we'll do the same thing. Start with the right edge here, a little more darker on that edge, you know, to give it some depth, a little bit of shadowing and realism. Okay, let's see how we did. There you go. Not too bad. All right, well, he set that. <clears throat> now we're turning around. We're going to repeat everything I just did on the other side. And here's the stencils I made for the other side.
Again, just spray mostly on the stencil itself. Set it quickly. And now for the two last sections. Remember a little more paint on the far edge. Think of it like a curved shadow look. And there we go. That's what it looks like on top as well. I may have to go back and give a little more, you know, a little more color there, but let me heat set this. <coughs> I like to do <clears throat> is like to put a little bit of a little detail here towards the back end of the lure and that's kind of kind of finish up the, the shell pattern I just use the edge of um, one of my stencils lay it right there remember spray mostly on the stencil you want the overspray on to go on the lure. There you go. Just like that. And I'll do it on the other side. Quickly. Alright. There we go there. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take some of the black that's already in the brush and darken up the back a little bit, kind of like what you see here on our sample. Very lightly. Again, a little bit goes a long way. A bit of clogging going on here. And this black just kind of ties in the shell pattern. And a little bit on the nose there. Alright, I'm going to heat set that. And we're getting close to being finished. Okay, we're pretty much with the painting process for the craw. Um, we're going to clear coat now. But if you look, I have some black fleck on the, uh, on the bait. I don't have any on the belly, uh, so I can't mix the uh, the glitter, it's black glitter basically, really extra fine or ultra fine. I I can't mix it right now into the uh, into the epoxy. I use the Devcon two ton clear coat epoxy 30 minute working time because then I would get it on the belly. So I'm going to start with epoxying the whole bait, and then I'm going to go back, put some glitter into the epoxy, and re reapply just in the scallop areas here. That's not the only way to do it. I mean, if you want, you can take some black paint, put it on a paint on a uh, on a toothbrush, and splatter. Do like a little splatter effect, which I have an example here on another bait. So you can see all the splatter marks, and that works just as good. I mean, um, really, the techniques are kind of endless. You can do it the way you want. <clears throat> so I better get clear coating here before this stuff starts getting gooey. So I put some black eyes on there. You can do any eyes you want, but I like black beady eyes. And uh, again, you can buy these eyes at a lot of places uh, online. Um, 
I got these, I believe, from uh, dingerbaits.com. Uh, there's other suppliers too. They're pretty common. So nice even coat, and that would also get out any bubbles that are that's in the clear coat. Long even strokes. Don't forget the back of the bait and the belly. People have asked me, you know, where are you getting your color ideas from? Well, again, this color came from uh, a pro bass angler, Craig Alderman, but he didn't come up with it just right out of his head. He got the idea from a, uh, a large worm that he fishes with, and it's been very successful, and the worm was a pumpkin color with a chartreuse tail, and he says, Mike, can you duplicate this for me? And this is what we came up with, and it's just been just a killer bait. <clears throat> the colors are amazing. So keep clear coating here. Almost done. Goes pretty quick. It's going to take about six to eight hours for this to dry or cure. I have all the time in the world because up here in Minnesota all the lakes are frozen over so I won't be able to use this until spring. Okay. So the initial coating is pretty much done. So I have some glitter here. I'm going to pour just a little bit into my cup with the epoxy. Get a little bit on my brush. And target just the scalloped areas or the shelled areas. See that? And just use the brush to kind of spread it around even on the, the gill plate a little bit. And don't forget the back. this shows up in the camera. Again the glitter you can get uh, you know online at some tackle I think it was uh, Lure Parts Online or Tackle Warehouse has them. Um, I think even Walmart has the kitties uh, multicolor glitter you could use. But it may not be fine enough but uh, it doesn't have to be necessarily be really fine just whatever you, however you're going to use it in your application. I wouldn't shoot it through an airbrush. It would definitely clog and screw everything up. So I think we're just about done here. Again, we're doing it this way just so we don't get any of the fleck on the belly because that's not what I want. But this has a lot of fleck. I love this. I hope the bass love it as much as I do. Just about done here. Okay. Let's get it back on here to dry. Whoops. And that is our pumpkin craw. All right, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to, uh, to email me or just reply here on YouTube, and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Thanks for watching and subscribe.